Very important word we're looking at today, uh, the word sanctuary. Uh, a synonym for that word that's used in the Bible is the word temple. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, and we'll see how this all relates to uh, spirituality and a non-jurisdictional uh, access for the legal side. Uh, it has a restriction uh, of what it can and cannot do. There is a difference between what we call secular and what is spiritual. You need to look up these terminologies and definitions even in the uh, legal law dictionaries because they'll give you more of an understanding um, that maybe you've overlooked these definitions and you're not seeing that when you're mingling two things together that don't belong, you're mingling in what is uh, spiritual with what is considered mammon or secular, uh, there is a problem going to go on there because you've now lost the protection of the spiritual side by the confusion or the merger of the two things together. So again, relating to Matthew 6, 24, we're going to uh, read out of 1 Corinthians, Paul's words at 1 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 16. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So there is judgment and consequences for even legal authorities that overstep their bounds when you're doing the right thing and you're definitely remaining in a position that you're not crossing the line on the legal by making a claim by enjoindering or putting a joinder between your God-given Christian name claiming something from Caesar's world in share which would be relating to the use of the legal civil surname. So we're, um, we're basically going to read out of a, a unique uh, definition that showed up in the Canadian Law Dictionary. And it's under sanctuary. And it says protection. First definition. A place of refuge or protection. A place where neither a criminal nor civil process can be executed. So when you have basically joined in, become unequally yoked with the joinder between what is spiritual on your God-given Christian name, which is a gift, and then you've walked in to become a debtor under a civil pagan surname, joining the two, not leaving the two separate, but putting the two together, uh, you've now allowed all civil execution to occur, criminal also, because of what you've done. It's a truth or consequences arrangement. So I know at times this can become very confusing because of the confusion of the mingling of the two jurisdictions together, but you can't put the two together without expecting the results that will come from those actions. So. That's what we've gone over and over and over in, in the videos um, to break down this because I think there's still a confusion happening in the audience. When we're talking about the statement of birth and showing the statement of birth and showing that really in evidence your given name was non-transferable, it was an error on the part of the parents uh, to try to put something in, uh, actually even um, condemning in theory, that child, even ahead of time, that he would actually go in and touch the forbidden fruit. So the non-transferable, unalienable, would have been placed in the given name box because it doesn't belong to Caesar. And therefore, it was up to the child to make an elective choice of which path of who he's going to put his fidelity to. But if it had been remained in that, then he would have been far more protected. The, um, the Christian name is almost... Uh, to be looked at as the blood on the doorpost that happened with the Israelites uh, during their time of bondage uh, to Pharaoh in Egypt. They, the last thing they did was to prevent being executed when the angel of death flew over, they placed the blood of a lamb over their doorposts. So in essence, your Christian name is really, and your acceptance of Christ as your master and your sovereign, uh, and the one is above all principalities and powers, but based on his power of who he is, 
uh, raised to the right hand side of God upon his execution of God's will, uh, he is the blood on the doorpost. So therefore no civil or criminal execution of anything from that world that we're surrounded with can come in, but it's based on what we do and what we say and how we're going to conduct and walk. But if you're playing both sides and you're taking share from the, from the legal side for profit, well then basically you're in an attackable situation where God's spirit is not there for you.